Yo, we are here with the living legend Christian Thibodeau. Man, it is an honor for you to be in Casa del Monte here today. Awesome place, man. From a like a new father, it's it's. I love what you've done with the place. I think I'm gonna model myself after you. So you're my new mentor. Now. <laughs> oh man, well you've been mentoring me the past two hours over at Fortis Fitness in uh, uh, how to squat properly and how to do the Zer Zerker Scott squats. And uh, dude, man, what an experience! Well, it, first of all, the the atmosphere of that gym is awesome. I mean, anybody who loves hardcore training, seeing these big guys mm -hmm. move big weights, and you have also all kind of equipment that you have. You can't see anywhere else with the, the west side line of equipment. So it's it's an awesome place. I think that training starts a lot with the environment, but it, it depends on what your goal is. Because I love the gym setup you have here. I'm building my own gym also because I like my own time, my meditation. But sometimes feeding up that high energy uh, when you are in that high performance environment, that that also is worth a priority. Yeah, I think everybody was working <clears throat> with three fifteen or more in there. Oh, even on curls, yeah, right? Know, every exercise. <laughs> so, you know, I asked uh, Christian if he could train me today, take me through some uh, exercise. But, you know, what I really want to talk about is I, I, there's so much stuff I want to talk about. We were talking about marketing before. Mm. You want to just pick up off of that? Well, if, for, for me, it's an awesome conversation because if, uh, if you gave me Apple, they would go bankrupt in two weeks, right? Now, I've always been the guy with the knowledge and the guy with the ideas, but I've never been able to market myself. And because of that, uh, for a long time, I was against all of these guys who were marketers, who were uh, the celebrities, because oh, they, they are not smart, they're just trying to make money. You know what? Somebody's got to make the money. Might as well be someone with the knowledge, right? So I'm learning more and more about how to maximize your visibility out to be able to reach as many people as you can because if you want to help people out well you have to reach them first right hey listen i wouldn't say you're a bad marketer i think the definition is the definition is really important. what is first of all your definition of marketing i don't have any definition of marketing that's the thing here's my definition i think you might like it uh you tell me marketing for me is just your beliefs mm -hmm. it's just what you stand for and i think you're actually really good at marketing because you're very clear on what you stand mm -hmm. for and you've been very prolific. Uh, a good marketer is somebody who's prolific and constantly putting out information, which, I mean, I don't know anybody else. Who's, how, how many articles have you put out over well, the years? Last time I've counted, it was <clears throat> over 600. And if you count the videos, uh, it's over a thousand like pieces of information, uh, either articles or videos. So, so marketing is beliefs. Marketing is having attention. And, and, and it's knowing what you're good at. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. writing your... Is that your forte video or marketing or, or sorry, writing or video? I think that uh, teaching, teaching, te teaching is my, my, my forte. When I teach in person, that's where I really shine. Of course, the problem is there's only so many dates you can have similar, similar wise, okay. but I'm looking into like the webinar online webinar stuff. Uh, then I would say videos. My big problem when I do videos is that I tend to do too many of them at once. Uh. So I will put like book one day and I'm going to shoot 80 videos. And you know what? I never prepare any of these videos. It's I have a list of subjects and I will just go from scratch. Uh -huh. But it, it just kills me and I, I can't do anything else for a week because I'm just burned out. Right. So it's not maybe not the most efficient way of doing things. There's different ways <clears throat> to skin the cat. You know, mm -hmm. you can, you know, I think the quantity comes out in the quantity anyway. So as they're going on, you're getting better and better. I, I don't think there's like, it's like many things in training. There's not like, the right way or the wrong way it is the way that works for you in fact in training everything works that's wow. the thing and, and as a coach I shouldn't say that but really it really it's really, everything works it depends on what works for you both right. physically and psychologically and if you okay there's only one important thing to get results uh -huh. it is to train hard yeah it's to, it, to train hard you have to be motivated Right. To be motivated, what you're doing in the gym, you should have a strong buy-in into it. Uh -huh. It's just like marketing, right? And when somebody buys a program for you or buy a service yeah. from you, right? There's an emotional buy-in because you wrote the program. So that, that, that part of the job is done. But when it's yourself, when you're training yourself, it's hard to get at buying. So what you need to do is find a type of training that fits your own profile. Mm. Now, me, I've always been more of a low rep kind of guy. That's what I love doing. Yeah. If you force me to do those sets of 12 to 15 reps, I will shoot myself. It, it, <laughs> in German volume training is super effective, right? It's one of the best ways to build muscle. I would not be able to finish huh. a German volume training because I would fall asleep before the end of a workout. <laughs> in fact, that's what I, I once did German volume training for a month. And I actually lost muscle and got weaker and fatter. 
Really? Yeah. Is yeah. the cortisol? It's cortisol, uh, yeah, absolutely. The cortisol release and just the, the, the boredom of it, my, my perform, performance would just go down and down from week to week because oh. I was dreading those workouts because there were no fun anymore. It felt like a job instead of something I love doing. Uh, just last time I competed in bodybuilding, at the end, I was doing the typical bro building workout. And you know what? For three months after the competition, I did not set foot in the gym huh. because I, I lost my taste for training. My passion became a job and became a chore, became something I really did not want to do. Huh. So it's really, you need to find a type of training that you enjoy doing that motivates you because that is what will make you train the hardest possible. So we're going to talk about personality type training because this is really what you're most passionate about mm -hmm. these days, right? Helping. Yeah. Well, I've always been into psychology. Mm -hmm. Both my parents are psychologists mm -hmm. and they actually work in human resources, which is like the profiling individuals and putting them in the best spot possible mm -hmm. in the job. And I worked for them for two years. Uh -huh. That's always been my passion. And as a coach, I always said I was never the best at writing or writing programs. Uh -huh. My greatest asset was in the field, in the trenches, knowing, hey, what will work for you? Just by judging nonverbal cues. Are you into it? Are you not? When do I need to change the training program? When I need to increase volume, decrease volume, just based on the feedback I was getting. So that's what the neurotyping system, which is developing a, a type of training that is based on your personality profile, on your neurological profile, combine both of these passions. Uh -huh. So let's talk about these, like, let's just dig right in here. I will come back to marketing mm -hmm. later. We'll talk about family. I know we want to talk it about It actually stuff fits well it. because you know, knowing someone's personality profile actually helps you with marketing because uh -huh. if you know your triggers, you know, will someone respond well to uh, like trying to be seduced or uh -huh. uh, like being Okay, you will be the badass mofo in the place. That will right. work with some people. Gotcha. Or, and with some people, you need to emphasize if you want to train as safely as possible, you will never doubt anything you're doing in the gym. That's gotcha. two different approaches. So let's break them down. Mm -hmm. What are the different neural types that you're coaching? And there's, did you say there's four? Or six? There's five. There's five. five. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so there's five neural types, and each of basically. Uh, let me backtrack a bit. It's yeah. based on evaluating or estimating mm -hmm. your neurological dominance. Which neurotransmitters are dominant in your brain? Neurotransmitters, of course, are messenger that tells your brain what to feel, mm -hmm. what to think. Every emotion you feel, mm -hmm. it's all because of the chemicals in your brain that are called neurotransmitters. So depending on those neurotransmitters, you will respond emotionally differently in different situations. So you could feel a completely different way than I do when something happens to you. And that is because of neurotransmitters mostly. So you have six dominant neurotransmitters that will affect personality. Uh, of these six, you have three that have the purpose of exciting your nervous system, exciting your brain, mm -hmm. making those neurons firing faster, making you active, increasing your capacity to concentrate, to be motivated. Dopamine, adrenaline, and glutamate. Now, these two neurotransmitters have their own particularities based on uh, the, the part of the brain they will activate. And every neurotype, every person has one dominance. Huh. So you will have all of these three neurotransmitters in your brain and they will have an impact, but only one of them you are the most sensitive to. In my case, it's adrenaline. Mm -hmm. So when you have high sensitivity to adrenaline, when I'm at rest, I'm lazy. I procrastinate, I'm unmotivated, I'm, I lack self-esteem, I have low self-esteem, I'm not confident because adrenaline is important to feel that way. But as soon as adrenaline kicks in, that's us presenting in front of a crowd, uh -huh. dude, I morph into the Incredible Hulk, uh -huh. completely different. So, so that is my dominance. I feel like you're on adrenaline right now. Absolutely. I, I, and I'm about like 50%. Is that because we just worked out of it? And you're talking no, it's because I'm talking about something that, that I'm passionate about. Gotcha. Yeah. But you, you, we saw me, you saw me in a car, right? When I was in a car, I was speaking slowly. Uh -huh. I was having a hard time putting sentences together, much bigger accent because my adrenaline was lower. Now it's higher because it, I'm talking about something I'm passionate about. How do your low self-esteem lower with uh, adrenaline? That impacts too. Mm -hmm. So that would affect self-image yeah. and yeah. just, you know, maybe depression, anxiety too, kind of yeah. stuff like that. Well, it, the thing is that when you have, okay, the, the neurotransmitter responsible the most for confidence is dopamine, dopamine yeah. which is another excitatory neurotransmitter. I think I'm very responsive to dopamine. Probably. I mean, uh, about 14% of the population is. Right. 
uh, the problem is when you have one exciter in your transfer that's, that's really high, like very sensitive to it, well, normally the other two, glutamate or adrenaline, for example, they will be lower, much lower. So me, since my adrenaline sensitivity is so high, my dopamine sensitivity is very low because your body does not want to be sensitized. Since it's all three exciter in your transfer because you're going to be high all the time and that over time will create uh, an ang ang uh, anxious mindset. Mm -hmm. Because if your okay, anxiety is nothing more than your brain firing too fast for you to control it. Mm -hmm. So your neurons are firing so fast that you lose control of your thought process. Your muscle become tense and tight. That is what anxiety is. And it creates all those scenarios in your brain, right? Because your brain is firing so fast that it has to be used to do something. So I'm creating all those crazy scenarios in my head. I can't control them. And they actually have an emotional charge to them. That's what anxiety is. So that's why you don't want too much of these excitatory neurotransmitters. Me, because my adrenaline sensitivity is so high, my dopamine sensitivity or dopamine level is very, very, very low, which means I have low self-esteem at rest. It's only when adrenaline kicks in that I can be confident. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's why when I'm at rest, I, I, I have very low self-esteem. That's also why I'm lazy, for example. So what things can you do to get your adrenaline up? What do you do when you need it up? Well, uh, first of all, I find that anything that I'm passionate about, I mean, I will just get into that zone. I mean, if, we, if you're talking to me about training, dude, I, I won't be able to stop because my adrenaline kicks in, right? I'm passionate about it. The problem is uh, because idea, you could say, well, I'm going to amp your adrenaline up all the time and you're going to be like super you. And I did that in the past. I would, one strategy I used was to do a lot of very short workouts in a day, like jumping. I would jump like for 10 minutes, three, four times a day that would just amp up my nervous system. Okay. The problem is you don't want to be activated all the time okay. because that will, will create what we call either CNS or adrenal fatigue. Uh -huh. Now, adrenal fatigue gets, gets a bad rap. That's yeah, a trigger word in the uh, uh, science-based community. You'll yeah. get wrong. Yeah, yeah. But, but, the ringer. But, but, and, and technically, you're they're, talking about that, yeah. Yeah, they, technically they're right because you don't fatigue the adrenal glands. Uh -huh. But the symptoms are real. Yeah. Whatever you call it, CNS fatigue or adrenal fatigue, it's the same thing. And in reality, it can Under be... Underreactive thyroid, would that be another way to describe it? Pardon? An underreactive thyroid? Uh, it could be a symptom. It, it's, mm -hmm. it, it's, a, it's something that will come from okay. what we call adrenal fatigue. Okay. In reality, what, what happens is either you are depleting your dopamine, uh -huh. because what happens is if you're constantly forcing your body to pump out adrenaline, uh -huh. okay, adrenaline is made from dopamine. Okay? So if you're always pumping adrenaline like crazy because I'm under stress, because I'm always uh, fired up, well, I will deplete my dopamine. Because I'm using it all to produce adrenaline, right? So, so uh, that could be a symptom. Deep dopamine depletion will make you less motivated, lethargic, low sex drive, low confidence, low motivation. Okay, just, and just feeling like crap all the time. <clears throat> or the second thing it could be, it could be that you are producing so much adrenaline all the time that your receptors, your adrenal receptors, are being stimulated by adrenaline all the time. Adrenaline is like the NOS in your car. It should be a short burst, 40, 45 minutes, no more. If your receptors are connected to adrenaline for hours and hours every day, they will protect themselves by becoming desensitized to the action of adrenaline. Now you don't even respond to your own adrenaline on top of depleting dopamine. <clears throat> That's another <clears throat> symptom that we call CNS fatigue or adrenal fatigue. Now, when that happens, if you don't have dopamine, if you don't respond to adrenaline, the body will need another way to mobilize energy and get up. It will start producing more cortisol. Okay? Cortisol is a low-grade adrenaline. It shares many of the function of adrenaline, including increasing heart rate, mobilizing uh, glu uh, glucose, mobilizing fatty acids. Okay? Yeah. So when I can't respond to my own adrenaline, or I can't make adrenaline because my dopamine is depleted, mm -hmm. I start pumping out cortisol. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that few people understand, Cortisol plays a huge role in metabolic rate, okay? T4, T3, thyroid hormone. You mentioned thyroid earlier, right? Well, we know that we have the T4 thyroid hormone, which is inactive. It doesn't have much of an impact on metabolic rate, on how much energy you're burning. It's the T3 
that has a great impact on metabolic rate. The higher the T3, the more calories you burn even at rest. Now, cortisol plays a huge role in the conversion rate. If your cortisol is chronically elevated, that conversion in the, from T4 to T3 is stopped. So your T3 level goes down, your metabolic rate goes down, you have symptoms of what we call hypothyroid. But it's only because the excess in cortisol prevent that conversion. On top of that, if cortisol stays chronically elevated even longer, yeah. not only are you stopping that conversion, you are actually converting T4 into reverse thyroid or thyroid binding protein, which actually makes the little T3 you have left inactive. Mm. That's why we, I mean, you've done the biosignature, bioprint yeah. course, and you know that when you have belly fat, it's cortisol, right? Mm -hmm. But why would cortisol make you fatter? It's a mobilization hormone. The function of cortisol is mobilizing fat. It's mobilizing glu uh, glucose, mobilizing yeah. fatty acid, uh, yeah. uh, amino acid. Why would it make you fatter? Well, it makes you fatter because if it's chronically elevated, it will decrease your T3 level. Mm -hmm. And it can also make you insulin resistant. So it's like a whole spectrum of problems. And it can all start by either depleting dopamine or making your adrenal receptors resistant to adrenaline. Wow. Dude, that was like, yeah, that's outstanding. So, so those are the three excitatory ones. You've yeah. got the three. The glutamate also. And the glutamate, yeah. uh, I believe, is the main responsible for the pussification of North America. Right, let's talk about this. <laughs> you think this is a real issue? Absolutely. But, uh, <laughs> when did it happen? Uh, Why did this happen? It started out with the, the, the overgrown, overgrowth of the fast food industry mm -hmm. and the ready to eat meals. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of people blame excess estrogen mm -hmm. for the decrease in the number of alpha males. And you notice that women now have secondary sexual characteristic much earlier than men, like breast, wider hips, mm. uh, menstruation periods much sooner. Oh. And guys have much less masculine traits, body hair, less yeah. muscle, more fat. Yeah. And, and we blame estrogen and it does play a role, okay? But another big culprit in the, I would, when I say pussification, I mean people who are overly emotional. I get offended by everything, right? <laughs> and of course, socialization that comes into play, but glutamate. Huh. Glutamate is the neurotransmitter that amplifies emotion. Mm -hmm. The more glutamate you have, the more you feel, mm -hmm. both positive and negative. So you become that overly emotional person mm -hmm. and you have a hard time controlling these emotions. And glutamate, the, here's the thing, it's a neurotransmitter, but it's also added to foods. It's added to fast food, MSG, monosodium glutamate. Yeah. But the problem is that they don't, they can claim not to have it because from a legal standpoint, you don't have to write MSG in the label. You can write uh, glutamic acid. Mm. You can even write glutamate, glutamine and it, it is allowed even if it's glutamate. Mm. Now, you have that glutamate in fast food, in commercial coffees, mm. in frozen meals. And when you consume that, it stays with you and you accumulate it. Now, why are they adding it to your food? Well, it's the emotional neurotransmitter. Mm -hmm. It amplifies your emotional response. If you're eating something you really like, well, that pleasure response will be magnified mm -hmm. because of the MSG and you become addicted to it. So you stay away from this? You should. <laughs> but here's the problem because excess glutamate. Is there any benefits of it? No. Okay. It's neurotoxic. Gotcha. It actually can lead to bipolar disorders. It can lead to depression. Uh -huh. uh, excessive glutamate level is really bad. Now, you do need some of it because one of the main, okay, I talked about the excitatory neurotransmitter, those that amp you up. You have the neurotransmitters that calm you down, that allow you to avoid being anxious, overstressed. You have GABA and serotonin. Yep. And GABA is made from glutamate. Mm. So you do need some glutamate to produce the GABA. But most people will have a hard time converting glutamate into GABA because they are deficient in vitamin B6, which is necessary for that conversion to take place. Huh. So it's uh, when, when, you have, when that conversion sucks, you don't have that conversion taking place, you're overly emotional and you're anxious. Not a good mix. What's the sixth neurotransmitter? 
So you have uh, dopamine, adrenaline, and glutamate, which are the excited ones. Then you have serotonin and GABA, the two main calming neurotransmitters. Oh, there, oh, there's five, not six. No, there are six. There, 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 there's the six. other one is neutral, acetylcholine. Acetylcholine. But if you look at glutamate, uh, glutamate GABA and serotonin, both, the job is to slow down your neurons, calm your brain, yeah. decrease anxiety. The main difference is, the way I teach it is, serotonin is like your brake pedal. GABA is the parking brake. So the parking brake, it's on or off. Serotonin, you can easily modulate. So depending on your dominance, if you are someone who is GABA dominant as far as your inhibitory neurotransmitter, you will have a very hard time changing your personality. You, what you see is what you get. You, will, you cannot change the, per, the way you are for anybody or any situation. If you have a more serotonin and GABA, then you can more easily adapt your behavior to a situation. Interesting. No kidding. And then you have acetylcholine, which is not an, it, it is both an excitatory and inhibitory neurotransmitter. So, so how do we figure out where we are? What, do you have a test? I have a test. Uh, it's 100 questions and it allows 100 you to, questions? Yeah, yeah. Wow. It allows, it, it, I, I designed it with my father and my father is, well, he was first a clinical psychologist uh -huh. and he taught uh, in college and his specialty was creating those personality tests. Huh. Uh, then he, he branched out to human resources and his whole purpose was evaluating someone's personality profile to see if it, they were fit for a certain job. So we designed that together to evaluate which neurotransmitter are high or low. And, and okay, this is fascinating. I'm sure we can go for a while. Give me a, an application of somebody's uh, neural type mm -hmm. applied to a workout and what you would see different compared to somebody else's. Okay, if someone, let's say for example, someone is uh, what I call a 2B. 2B is main excitatory neurotransmitter is glutamate mm -hmm. and its main inhibitory neurotransmitter is uh, serotonin. Mm -hmm. So they, 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 are, they are all about feeling sensation. They will be all about that mind-muscle connection, getting a nasty pump, looking okay. good, feeling better. They need to feel like they accomplished something because they have a lower self-esteem and they need external feedback to mm -hmm. know they're doing good. So, so if they do a, like a heavy workout, they don't get a pump, they don't sweat, they don't have increased heart rate, they don't feel motivated. If they do cardio, they are the people who they need to sweat a truckload. They need yeah. to have their heart rate racing, have lactic acid, because that way they know, hey, I worked hard. Mm -hmm. Now, if you, and, and they are not well suited for neurological work because they don't have a lot of inhibitory neurotransmitter. Mm. So when you do heavy work, you potentiate the nervous system. Mm. The heavier you lift, the more the nervous system is firing on all cylinders. Yeah. But the problem is they cannot calm it down because they, if you don't have a lot of the neurotransmitter that calm the brain down, once you are amped up, it will take hours and hours and hours to calm the nervous system down. And those hours, when the nervous system is revved up, what happens is I'm depleting dopamine and I'm increasing, I'm decreasing adrenaline sensitivity. Now, if you take someone who is like what I call a 1A, the 1A is the very competitive person, extroverted, verbal, super competitive, goal driven. Uh, that person is dopamine dominant and has a very high amount of GABA, very high amount of GABA. That person, as soon as the workout is over, vroom, the nervous system is shut down. I think that's me. It's possible. Because I can shift. I don't feel worked up. I can go from one thing to the next and I can fall asleep right after a workout. That's, that's a sign. I mean, uh, the Bulgarian Olympic weightlifters, they, 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 when you look at their schedule back then, they, they would like max out on snatch and squat at 9 a.m., then it would take a nap at 10.15. <laughs> the only way you can do that is if you have a lot of either GABA or serotonin. Oh. Now, if you can change your behavior, that would be more serotonin than GABA. So it would be more of a 1B. Is your system based on uh, getting the most out of your type or shifting somebody to a preferred type? Uh, you, 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 okay, you can't really, well, the only way you shift your type is changing your brain chemistry. Mm -hmm. The problem is, okay, you, are, you have two, well, three things really. You have neurotransmitter level, uh -huh. neurotransmitter sensitivity, and neurotransmitter transport. Now, your true nature depends a lot on neurotransmitter sensitivity, how much your brain responds uh -huh. to a neurotransmitter. So even if you, let's say for example, if me personally, okay, me, I have very low response to dopamine. 
Okay. Now I, I basically have no pleasure in life. I, the most I've been in my life is content. Okay. Now my wife is very sensitive to dopamine. She can look at a sunset and it's the most beautiful thing she's ever seen. Okay. She's very happy all the time. She doesn't need, uh, she, she, she takes pleasure very easily. Me, it, it's really hard because my dopamine response is super low. Now if I increase my dopamine level, I will not change my profile because my problem is not the quantity, it's the responsiveness. Yeah. So unless I increase the responsiveness of my, my receptors, I won't change my personality. But here's the thing. If many events can actually change your personality for the worse, mm -hmm. like me, for example, when I'm stressed, mm -hmm. then my personality will change because I will deeply my GABA. If I go low carbs, my personality change because I deplete my serotonin. Right. Okay. So, and when I decrease my serotonin, okay, normally I'm a person who needs variation. I mean, I will, I need to do snatches, then bodybuilding work at the end, right? You train at seven different gyms, you were telling me. Instead of seven different gyms, and I, I cannot follow a program. I always change it around. But, but I, when I, but that's because my serotonin and GABA are both fairly high. But if I go low carb, I'm dieting for a photo shoot, my serotonin goes down. Because low carbs, you don't convert tryptophan into serotonin as efficiently. So my serotonin goes down, and now I want to follow a plan. I want to do always the same thing. Because routine, needing to do the same thing over and over again, it's a symptom of anxiety. Because when you are anxious, you subconsciously, you want to stick to things you know will not hurt you. So when, when I'm when I'm dialing down, I don't want to meet any people. I don't want to go out, and I want to do things I'm comfortable with. When I'm not dialing and I'm happy, my serotonin is higher. Then I want all of these new experiences. I want to meet people. I want to train uh, different ways, different places. Huh. So share maybe a story with somebody you were able to really see get some dramatic results when they got their type right. Well, you know, one example. What kind of results can you start seeing here? Well, well let, let, I can give you micro examples. Yeah. Uh, like one athlete I work with, uh, he, he's a, he was a, a, a track cyclist wow. like on, the, uh, on the national team. And he was constantly feeling like crap because of all the volume he was doing like oh, cycling. Wow. Gotcha. And when he was training, he, he, his coaches had him do like higher volume work. So he came to me because I was training one of his friends who was on the national bobsleigh team. And he recommended him to me. So when I, when I did his personal profile, I saw, okay, you are 1A. You are built for neurological work. He can recover really fast from heavy work, really frequent, but zero tolerance for volume. Mm -hmm. If you look at his training program, he basically has six work sets per session. Not per exercise, per session. Wow. It's like two sets of power snatches, two sets of squat, two sets of bench press. Now the guy squats 550. And he's 173 pounds. 550 bench press 400. Power cleans 350. Oh jeez! And because and, and I, because he just is type can train neurologically speaking every day. So that's your goal to find out what their type is and then to make the adjustments. So do yeah. you have like a, like a template, if you will, or like a plan for each type yeah. that people yeah. can absolutely. Wow. Hey, how can people you know? Get into this. Do they have to go through you one on one, or do you have that? Well, I have a, I have a, I have an online certification on my website, gotcha. tibrb.com. So there's an online certification. I also give seminars on the system. Uh -huh. uh, and Is it for themselves or for them to like prescribe to their clients? Most of them, it, most of them, it's coaches. And here's a, a cool story, because I had a one one online coach. Okay. Well, he does coaching also, but um, he hired me like for one on one coaching. Yeah. Then he also bought the certification. Then he came to one of my seminars on neurotyping. Now he's running a, a coaching group. So he has a group on, on, on Facebook, private uh -huh. coaching group. And he now has 400 clients registered for a three-month uh, program. So 400 people. Let's say that I don't know exactly how he charges, but it's at least 200. Uh -huh. And he has four of these groups per year. And he's teaching your system. My system. Yeah. So, he so he's your cert one of your certified trainers. Absolutely. So people can get certified by you. They can learn the system, and then they can go create their own program. Absolutely. You know, obviously. So they're basically you're creating like a, a, a they're a, a, a cre accredited. They're um, it's similar to biosignature. Yeah, right. So they're certified now to teach the system. Yeah. So you become a biosignature practitioner, and you can teach the system. You know how to prescribe. See, and this is what I love. Like trainers need a system. Absolutely. You know, they're making stuff up. They don't have anything. Mm. 
names. I mean, just so you know, like that that's marketing naming stuff yeah. because you know, I talked to Stan Efferty this morning and he's got the vertical diet. Yeah, you know, when awesome. he talks about it, it's very crystal clear. It's like, what's that? Mm -hmm. And it's his system with a name. So I, I love this. I tell all my business coaching clients that you got to get plugged into a system that's rooted in a guy like mm -hmm. you with experience. You need a brand, right? You need, yeah. In the brand. So this is your primary thing. It's, mm -hmm. it's getting that right. And uh, how, how, how many uh, days is it to get certified? Well, the, the, the online course itself is 12 hours. Uh, you, of course, you have also the written material that you have the test to pass. But normally, people can, can, can get certified in, in a weekend because oh. if you can... If you can watch Netflix for for six hours a day, you can watch six hours of certification <laughs> in the day. Uh, ideally, I, I like people to take a look at the certification more than once because it's it's very complex material. I also recommend that they go read the articles I've written on my website on neurotyping and all the videos just to have the complementary uh, material because it, it's it is somewhat complicated. We talk about neurotransmitters, and brain chemistry. It, it's really complicated. It's ever evolving. So I'm, I'm always putting out new updates, new material. Your, is your guy working with mainly uh, higher level coaches or the end user, like mom and dad, soccer mom kind of thing too? I mean, it applies everywhere, obviously. I think that, and you know what? You know that one of my greatest influence was Charles Pollock, yes. right? I mean, a good friend of mine said yes. he passed away recently. Yeah, right? uh, and Charles and I agreed on like 90% mm -hmm. of, of this stuff, but there's a, like a 10% we never saw eye on. And, and he himself had a system of using psychological profile to program training. And we didn't come up with the same conclusion. And the main reason is that Charles only worked with elite people, oh. either elite athletes or very high end executives. Oh. And both share a, a commonalities. They are all one of the two first two profiles, like one A or one B. So when you, Charles, my first introduction to psychological profile and training was an article written by Charles on T Nation oh. called uh, The Five Elements of Training. Oh. The first article discussing, well, if you're dopamine dominant, here's how you should train. And the thing is that when you look at that, he said, okay, when you're dopamine dominant, you're built for INTC training, which is true. Mm. But he recommended high volume. But me, I found that when I, someone is truly dopamine dominant and they do a high volume of work, they crash. Mm. Okay. Uh, because they have low dopamine. When you do, dopamine dominant doesn't mean you have high dopamine. It means that you are dopamine sensitive. So if you do too much volume, you produce too much adrenaline, you deplete your dopamine, you crash. Mm -hmm. You can do a very high intensity, but volume not so much. For one A, the one B is dopamine dominant with high acetylcholine. They can do volume because the acetylcholine reduces adrenaline production. Mm -hmm. So th that's a, a Small thing, but the thing is that Charles only worked with two types of people. Uh -huh. So his whole knowledge is like, look at one of his main recommendations: meat and nuts breakfast. Yeah, that will work awesome uh -huh. for anybody dopamine dominant, uh -huh. because meat and nuts will increase your, 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 your dopamine. Dopamine, yeah, yeah, because and basically only levels in the brain, right? That's, that's, exactly. Yeah. I think going in and dopamine. Yeah. So, so for type one A or one B, we need more dopamine. That's awesome. Mm. But if you're a type three, mm. you need some carbs in the morning. Absolutely, you yeah. need you need serotonin. Absolutely. Mm. So that will not work the same. So and okay, cardio. Charles was against cardio. It, mm. Cardio makes you fat. Yeah. yeah because if you were type one A, maybe. Okay. But if you're a type two B. A type 3, it actually decreases your cortisol. Oh. For type 1A, it increases cortisol. For 1B, it's neutral. For 2A, it's neutral. 2B, 3, it decreases cortisol. So all these people getting caught up in these internet debates about this and that. Everybody's it's, right. Yeah. Everybody's right. It depends I mean, what talking about. We talked about that uh, earlier in the gym, right? Yeah. In the history of mankind, not a single person was ever able to make someone change their mind in an internet discussion. Hey, have you ever got, come on, you must have got caught up in at least one. When I was younger, dude, I, because me, okay, I, I'm, I'm, I need self validation. I have, I have I'm the same way. I have low self esteem, so I need other people to like me, uh -huh. to respect me, to admire me. Uh -huh. So when someone gets into an argument or, or I talk bad or trash about me, I, I take it really personally. Uh, and I remember one time, okay. Now, I try to get along with everybody. I think that is my... I watch you engage with people. You're really good. Well, it's because I want everybody to like me. I really yeah, but, you're, but, you, but you still challenge and hold your yeah, ground. Yeah. But you're, you, you do it in a civil way. Exactly. You, you make them feel like, okay, you know what? I respect your opinion. 
uh, I, I see where you're coming from, but I have not the same belief, but that doesn't mean you're not right, okay? Right. But there's one guy, okay? Okay. Lyle McDonald. Oh, yeah. You know Lyle, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not and, personally, but yeah. And, and Lyle and I actually used to, to get along fine. I remember, uh, like, like, dude, 18 years ago, he actually helped me get lean for a TV role of a male stripper. <laughs> Why am I not surprised, dude? I mean, I, 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 just for everybody here, I mean, he's a good-looking guy. Man. I, I played two roles on TV. Yeah. One was a male stripper, and the other one was a steroid dealer. So okay. I'm not being. No chance. This guy's gonna play a nuclear scientist, right? What did I call you? The pretty bouncer. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, keep going. Sorry. Yeah, I've lost my train of thought. No, so, uh, so a lot yeah, of actually, yeah, he actually yeah, helped me get yeah, leaner, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I helped him with his speed skating training. Uh huh. And what happened is that I, when T Nation came out with the Anaconda protocol, like three supplements that you have to take in a certain order, yeah, yeah. uh, and they, they use like a, a very, very aggressive marketing strategy. Christian sure. Thibodeau gained 28 pounds in a month. And sure. it, it, it was actually true, but it was after me not training for six months, what I mentioned earlier with your training, and a lot of it was water retention yeah. because it was loaded full of sodium. Now, I'm a water retention machine. I can literally, without even taking a diuretic or anything, I will be 12 pounds lighter in the morning. I, 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 it's crazy how much water I can gain. And I gain water inside the muscle. So when I'm full, I look twice as big as I am. When I'm wearing clothes and I'm dehydrated, I look super small. So I really did gain the 28 pounds. It was not like 100, it wasn't muscle. It's yeah. impossible. So Lyle, he started this, like, you, because when, when your friend becomes what you feel is a sellout, you take it even harder. So yeah, like it was really, really hard on me on this on, on this forum. And somebody sent me the link, and it, it really hurt me bad. Mm -hmm. So I went on the forum, this forum, mm -hmm. and I answered everybody, but in a in a civil manner. Yeah. And at the end, everybody liked me. And Lyle was was getting pissed off. Yeah, he's a good guy, but he's the liar. I'm not. Do you prefer do you prefer someone who is nice to you, but fuck you, you know? <laughs> yeah, sure. Anyway, so I've, I, it's funny because Lyle is a super, super, super smart guy. I really respect his knowledge. And I've always wanted to get along with him, but I was never able to fix that. It, it, Lyle, once you are on his backside, he just, yeah. he will never let that grudge go. I can't imagine. I mean, yeah. So, I mean, you've done a great job just sticking to what you're best at, educating. Mm -hmm. and, and the people, you know, time always allows the cream to rise to the top. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And... Uh, I want to hear, um, you know, maybe what are you looking forward to most these days? What, what are you really focused on these days? Where's Christian Thibodeau taking his army? Where's the Tib army going? Well, wait, uh, I'll be honest. What I what what gets me going is presenting, mm. like teaching, teaching, you know, teaching by talking. And I like writing articles. Uh -huh. it, articles used to be the big thing. It was the only way to really share knowledge because. No bandwidth was, was was not cheap on the internet. Yeah. We didn't have like YouTube and stuff like that. So so it was we didn't have Facebook, of course, Instagram. So it was all about writing articles. All I ever wanted to do was share knowledge, share information. But but me giving seminar is the greatest thing in the world because my greatest skill set and that, that the one I had when I was coaching is reading people, reading nonverbal. I can know if someone is interested or not. So when I'm present, and you know what you know what that is because I have low self esteem. Okay. When you have low self-esteem, you need other people to like you, to feel good about yourself, uh -huh. but you don't believe it when they give you a compliment because I have low self-esteem. So the only way to really believe that they like you is reading their nonverbal. So from a very early age, I learned to read people. And when I give a seminar, the reason I'm good at giving seminar is that I know okay, that I'm losing that guy. So I'll be able to change my tone of voice okay. and change the discussion to really get a, get a person. I'm losing him. He looks more like a bodybuilder. I'm going to use a bodybuilding example that's going to gain his interest again. Uh -huh. so, so I really love that. I, I love that game of seducing people. Mm. And, and what I really want to, and, and that is the honest to God truth, is helping people I like and people I believe in reach the level I'm at. Reach the success I've achieved. Like for we are at the Swiss Symposium right now, and, and you know Ken, of course, asked me to present, and I asked him, "Well, can I bring Malin, who's a, one of my team member, and I can I have them present alongside with me?" Mm. He said, "Sure," because she's amazingly smart. She's a great presenter, but she's not well known internationally. Mm. What better place is there than the Swiss? 
to get someone well known as our field. I, Alex was my powerlifting guy. Mm. I brought him with me in Switzerland. I brought him with me in France. Mm. Uh, I brought him with me in St. Martin because I want him to get known right. internationally. That's what I want to do. Yeah. So how's the travel going to get impacted now with the baby? Uh, uh, baby boy or girl? Boy, Jaden. Baby boy. Oh, Jaden, yeah. yeah. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. That's huge. Well, same to you. Yeah. Seven, seven weeks, same, same as me. Yeah, I think, well, yeah, probably almost the same day. Kind of. Yeah, we both Ooh. have uh, new babies at seven weeks. Yeah. That's so cool. When, uh, when, when was it born? I don't even know. August, <laughs> 20, August 29th, I think. Dude. August 29th. We'll confirm it with Flash. There we go. We go upstairs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's pretty so much we're living in the same life kind of right now. So how, yeah. how do you uh, manage to travel now with a newborn? Are you going to just do less or yeah? Uh, actually, you, you, or you just have to, you know. The, the, well, that's why we want to do more of the, uh, the online seminar. Thing. Gotcha. But uh, the, the cool thing is that I, I did struck a deal with Good Life Fitness. Mm. Uh, so they actually go through all the Good Lives uh, and give seminars to their trainers. Oh, cool. Which is cool because it's in Canada so I can leave Friday evening and yeah. come back Sunday evening oh, nice. whereas when I present in Europe I have to because of the, of the, 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 the jet lag and all that stuff I have to leave on a Wednesday sometimes Thursday and yeah. I come back on a Tuesday sometimes so it's a lot longer and, I, and I'm crashed for a week whereas when I come back from good life I'm good to go the next day oh. but it's still hard man because not be well, actually it's physically it's easier because now it's actually I'm resting when I'm giving a seminar because I don't have to wake up at, at 3 a.m. to feed the baby. But first of all, I want to see it. I miss him, right? Yeah, yeah. But more importantly, I feel really bad for my wife uh -huh. because I know that she's working. Over, I mean, I have three dogs also, so uh -huh. she she's working overtime and she she wants to get back into training. And I I feel bad for her because she's just drained. And and to be honest, I've not been a great husband. And that's the one thing uh, so far I really want to change that because and I can blame the fact that I'm really busy, I'm really tired, but that's never an excuse, right? It's yeah. never an excuse. So, so I need to get better at that. So, so yeah, well, how, what are you going to do differently? What do you feel? Uh, I need to find out. Like, uh, me, <laughs> I've always saw myself as an artist. Uh -huh. I, I don't do well with scheduling, but I, I will need to do a schedule. So I had, um, you know, Craig Valentine? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So Craig's one of my coaches and he came over and he wrote out the perfect week, uh, you know, plan yeah. for me. And as you can see on Sundays, I spent yeah, two Jenny. hours sitting down just to plan the whole week. Yeah. Okay. And, and that's been huge. And then he gave me another great tip at the end of the uh, day. It's called the reverse alarm clock. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I end my day at five, but I have an alarm go off at 430. So I do a brain dump. And I write out everything that didn't get nice. done that day, and I script right. my day for the next day. And that, uh, in that period of time, I just basically turn off all the apps, if you apps, if you will, run into my brain. Mm -hmm. And then, um, because I'm always distracted by my phone, and uh, that's a problem when I go upstairs because I work from home. I have a new exercise where the kids and I go upstairs with the phone and we put it under the mattress together. Hmm. So I'm utilizing yeah. you know, my loved ones to hold me accountable and just keep it mm. there. And then there is a time if I need to come back on the phone in the evening time for half an hour from 8.30 to 9, but then technology's off at 10 o'clock and I'm in, a, I'm in bed at 11 o'clock. Mm. So um, this whole premise is built around putting the big rocks in first. Yeah. So identifying those priorities, and that's been a big game changer too. Just planning up the yeah. Know, I, that's the one thing I realized I absolutely need to do. Just schedule it out. Yeah, I know. Daddy I've never out. I've never done that, it's but weird, I've never had a kid before. So. Yeah, yeah. You know what? It's exactly. It's it's like a new training program. You know what you need to do, and you just got to become more and more adherent to. Or maybe a, a better example: a new diet. You've got the plan, but now you just have to become more and more here yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah. You have to be natural. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that's it. that is exactly what I need to do. Okay, cool, man. Let's go back to um, you know, marketing and uh, you know, I wanna I wanna hear more of your thoughts on uh, you know, how, what is your strategy to get more awareness? Because you obviously value what you have, mm -hmm. right? You know people need like I, I love what you said. They're gonna buy from someone. Yeah. So what are some of the things that you do to ensure that people are uh, that, you know, one of my coaches says there's only two reasons you're going to go to business. One, people don't know who you are or they forget who you are. So what are you doing to prevent those two things? Well, I, I think doing podcasts like this is yeah. a big thing. Because uh -huh. First of all, it's what I really love to do. I mean, I love doing podcasts and the more I do, the more my name 
uh, gets out there and and there's a big turnaround in our market right because you just look at okay the guys who are reading our articles right now probably did not know who we were last year mm. and they will probably be moving on to at least 50 percent of them will be moving on to something different so we always have to gain a new crowd like the die hard yeah. fans will remain the same yeah. but we always have to renew our crowd uh, so doing podcasts to me it's the, the big big thing. Uh-huh. Uh, of course, to me the biggest, the best move was partnering with someone who is specialized in what I'm not good at. Or, uh-huh. uh, actually, I, I'm I'm good at marketing. I'm not good at putting things into play uh-huh. or starting the plan. So I needed a mover and shaker. Uh-huh. So I partnered with a guy who, who does all the marketing strategizing and uh-huh. one guy who's extremely structured. And who keeps everything together? Gotcha. Because me, if I, if it were to me, I would do everything. Okay, I, I want to post right now, so I would do like five posts today, and then I would just cannibalize the first post I made, and then I would not post anything for a week. Uh-huh. That's not how it works. Yeah, yeah. You got to become the Oprah in your business, mm-hmm. where you're only doing the five percent of things yeah. that you're best at, and you're delegating out the rest, and you're motivating your team, and then you're selling uh, people who are following you into the. Uh, opportunities to go deeper with you to get absolutely the exactly, that exactly. yeah yeah um, so what are you looking forward to these days what's what's up on the horizon uh, well you got your seminars seminars my training I, I'm once about it, training yeah I, I'm once again excited by my own training I mean I've, I've had a rough stint because uh, a few years ago I, I was doing gymnastic rings work and I'm an excessive person, so I was doing gymnastic ring work two hours, sometimes twice a day. And, and that really messed up my elbow because I wanted to get too, too strong, too fast, or get to the higher skills. And I was like 235 pounds. My body was not ready for it. So I, even to this day, I cannot fully straighten my, my, my right arm. And that led to compensating with my shoulder when I was bench pressing. And then I had a partial uh, AC joint separation. So my, my, I just can't press heavy weight anymore. The muscle is still there. But in my body protects itself. So the bench press was always my lift, my upper body lift. If I can't bench press, I'm not worth anything. So that was really, really hard for me to move away from that performance-based frame because I'm a performance guy. Yeah. I've been branded as a bodybuilding guy for many years, but that's not what I'm about. I'm about performance. Uh, I've done bodybuilding work, of course, but that's oh. not my strong suit. So for the past three years, I've been doing mostly like the lighter, lighter pump work and it does not fit what I love to do. Mm-hmm. And now I find a way, I find a way to finally train slightly heavier again, or at least to improve my performance. So I would really love to get back to at least like 85, 90% of my best performance. Mm-hmm. For the lower body, that's not an issue, but my, for my upper body, it would be a great accomplishment for me. Oh. So that from training wise, I'm starting to enjoy training again. Of, of course, I change the way I'm training because I used to be all about volume. Uh-huh. Fatherhood taught, taught, taught me something is that the average normal person cannot tolerate the same volume as a full-time athlete. Mm-hmm. So it, it gave me perspective about what is an actual realistic training program. I used to train two hours per session, sometimes two, two sessions a day. Now I'm training 45, 60 minutes and I'm progressing again oh. because, I was, because I was training too much. Now I was starting to actually lose muscle, gain fat because of the cortisol issue and I, I started to feel like crap. Mm-hmm. But I did not notice I was feeling bad because it became normal. Interesting. Yeah. That's, that's fascinating. Yeah, because you're, and then it just gets lower and lower yeah, and lower. Yeah. But and it feels normal because yeah. it's so gradual yeah. that you become, you become adapted. That, Dangerous. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, hey uh, we were talking about intermittent fasting mm. at the gym. You got yeah. a big article coming yeah, yeah, out yeah. and there's five big mistakes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe we don't have to spoil them all, but there's one or two things that were really mm. interesting because yeah. it's a big thing these days. What are some of the you know cautions or maybe well, where are people going wrong with intermittent fasting? It's funny. Personally, I've always been a fan of intermittent fasting. The first time I've read about intermittent fasting was 1999 mm-hmm. in an article called The Warrior Diet by Ari Offmeckler. Yeah, I got that one. Yeah. Yeah. And in the book, of course, that goes with the article. And from the moment I've read that book, I started intermittent fasting because it fits my psychological profile. Yeah. I, I, I hate small meals. I n- need to be satisfied when I eat. Oh. So instinctively, the warrior diet like appealed to me. What's me? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, so, you probably alike. Yeah. And really, the, the, the warrior diet was the first real intermittent fasting approach. But when you look at it, it was all about having one big meal at night. 
There was no, you, you can have your, your fasting like at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day. It was, you don't eat during the day and you eat at night because it was based on the fact that during the day, you need to be in a fight or flight mode. It's what we call sympathetic mode. Yeah. And eating a lot gets you out of that sympathetic mode and back into parasympathetic rest and recover mode. Mm -hmm. So you ate at night to relax and recover and you did not eat during the day to stay more active. That's what the true intermittent fasting was. Now you have people fasting during the night. So I'm, I'm, I'm fast, I'm sleeping nine hours a night. I'm counting that as my fast. Well, of course it's easy. Or you have people, they stop eating at 8 p.m. and then they start eating again at noon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 16 hours. Dude, that's exactly how 90% of North America eat. And have you seen them? Mm. Okay, here's the thing. When you are eating, especially if it's a large quantity of food, mm. it, it takes few, uh, several hours to fully digest. Mm. So if you eat a big meal, maybe you're not truly fasted mm. until four or six hours after that meal. So, so if you're counting, okay, I stop eating at 8, so my fast starts at 8.01. No. You still have food or nutrients getting into your bloodstream until until midnight, so you're not really fasted. That's no. a problem. Okay. Then, then the second thing is that you, people are counting the time they are being fasted while they are sleeping oh. equally as the the time as they would be fasting while they are awake. Here's the thing. What? Okay. The main benefits of fasting do not come from the fact that you don't have food in your stomach. That's part of it, but that's not the main thing. The main thing is that fasting will increase an enzyme called AMPK. And AMPK is the enzyme that gives you most of the benefits of fasting. Autophagy, uh, decrease in cellular growth, uh, increase in fat mobilization, all that good stuff come from increasing AMPK level, increasing in longevity. Now, AMPK comes from having a large caloric deficit. If I'm sleeping, my energy expenditure is very, very, very small. Whereas when I'm moving around, but when I'm awake, then it, at, it is at least twice as high. So there's no way in hell that one hour at night equals one hour when you are awake, when we talk about fasting. Mm -hmm. At the most, one hour of fasting when you're sleeping is equal to half an hour of fasting. So mm -hmm. if, okay, I, I go to sleep at eight, Mm -hmm. And I'm so, and I, 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 I stop eating at 8, uh -huh. then I, I go to sleep at 10, and I, I wake up at 6, then I'm eating at noon. I, mean, I have 16 hours fasting. No, you probably had like the equivalent of 8 hours of fasting. Interesting. Because you, it takes you 4 to 6 hours to fully absorb the food. Yeah. Then when you are sleeping, that 8 hours of sleep is really 4 hours of fasting. So, so, so it, people are not getting... All the results. I mean, of course, you're gonna lose fat. So, what's the right way to do it? So to how, me, how, how would I do it? If I wanted to incorporate some fasting for those benefits, how would do you do fasting? By the way, yes. Yeah. Yes. So, how do you do it? How, how me, it's, do it? I, it's a whole warrior diet. That's the first intermittent fasting I've used. I've used many other variations. That's the way I do it. One meal a day. One meal a day. How often? Uh, it depends on, on on my goal. If my goal is to get lean, I'll, that would be my base diet. Yeah. If I just want to like stay lean or avoid getting fat when I want to be able to eat what I like. Uh, it's, it's normally going to be two to three or four days a week, depending on, on how much fat I'm gaining. Uh, if I'm present, but one, one thing is for sure. Every time I give a seminar, mm -hmm. I'm always fasting. Mm -hmm. always. You know what, when I, I was just, I was telling some friends next week, I'm in New York presenting for three days and I rarely eat. I just Never intuitively eat. have found that if I don't eat, yeah. I'm on. People keep saying, can I bring you something? Can I bring you something? I'm like, no, I'm actually feeling perfect right exactly. now. Exactly. But that's because adrenaline, uh, adrenaline is released better on an empty stomach. Mm -hmm. When you eat food, you decrease adrenaline response. Mm -hmm. so, so when you are presenting, if you, and you seem to be on the same profile as I am, then you want as much adrenaline as possible to be the best version of yourself. And you want to eat afterwards a large amount of food to mm -hmm. decrease adrenaline to be able to rest and recover. So, so in, I did that instinctively also. Way before I was doing intermittent fasting, I never ate when I was presenting. So how, are you monitoring calories at uh, that one meal at the end of the day? Uh, not really. Okay. Only if I, if, I, 
if I find that my body composition is not moving in the right way. Okay. So for example, if my goal is to lose fat and I'm not losing fat, I will count calories to see, okay, maybe I'm eating too much. Okay, or maybe I'm not eating. And if I'm not gaining muscle, for example, if I'm losing strength or losing muscle, I need to monitor because maybe I'm not eating enough. A big, big problem with people who do intermittent fasting is oftentimes they don't get enough protein. Because I mean, like if I if I need to eat 225 grams of protein, well, if I only yeah. eat steak, that's two pounds of steak. If I want to eat eggs, that's 37 eggs a day. Yeah, what would you how how, are you, how would you manage your protein if you eat one meal a day? Well, that, that's where shakes can come in. I, I'm not a big believer in shakes. I, I don't like shakes. I, I prefer to use real food as much as possible. But if you need to have 225 grams of protein, like one one grams per pound, then you might need to resort to supplementation to get what you need. But what if you do a warrior diet, one meal a day? Yeah, yeah. How do you get, you can't get all your protein in one sitting. Well, you, you, would, you, would, you would have, well, then again, I use peri-workout nutrition. So I, I will, to me, I will break the fast by taking... Uh, oh, you would still do that? Yeah. yeah. Oh. So I, I, will, I would have the highly branched cyclic dextrins and uh, the, the casein hydrolysate uh -huh. during the workout. Uh -huh. Then I would have a shake post workout. Then I would have my meal like 30 minutes after. And then you would fast all day and have your meal at night. Well, if I train, that's if if I'm training in the evening. Uh -huh. uh, if I'm training in the morning, that's harder. Okay. Uh, if I'm training in the morning, I will have only protein. I will not have. I will not have the highly branched cyclic dextrin. I will only have casein hydrolysate before the workout because I don't want to increase. Okay. If you increase mTOR too much, mTOR is the enzyme that is antagonistic to AMPK. Uh -huh. What you want is AMPK here, mTOR here when you are fasting. When you are feasting, you want the opposite, okay? So amino acids, yes, they will increase mTOR a bit, especially leucine and isoleucine valine glycine. Yeah. Uh, but but if you, that's not too bad. But the main problem is carbohydrates and mainly insulin. Insulin carbohydrates will jack up mTOR. So you don't want that around the workout if you have to fast. But I want the amino acids in there to avoid, uh, because when you're training, you're increasing protein synthesis, you want some protein in there to be able to benefit from it. So so if I'm training, normally if I'm training, it's at 4.30 because I'm training really early. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what's your day look like? What's so so I, I, I wake, let's say I wake up at 4.00. Uh, then I will feed the baby as soon as I wake up. Then I go, I head to the gym and I train. But let's, say I, let's say I train from uh, 4.30 to, well, I come back home at 6 because the gym is a bit away. Uh, I'm going to have that highly brain stacked dextrin before the workout and during the workout. Let's say 20 grams, which is not that much, but you don't need more than that. 20 before, 20 No, no, 20, like, oh, no. 10 before, 10 during. Oh, okay, not you much. Don't, you know, you don't need much. You don't need more than that. I, I need brain, uh, 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 casein hydrolysate it is so effective as a protein that it probably has the same effect as 40 grams of, of whey. Nobody knows about this stuff. Mm -hmm. Co my coach, Ryan Fanley, he's speaking this weekend. He introduced me to it. I know you're a big fan of it too. So yeah. how much of that? 20, 20 or 20 grams. That's, that's enough. Tw so 10 and 10 again? Yeah. 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 Okay. If, if, I'm, if I'm fasting. Okay. That's different if I'm not fasting. Right? Okay. Because, okay. So, so if I'm fasting and normally when I fast, if, if I have to fast, if I decide to do intermittent fasting and I'm training in the morning, it's going to be more strength training. Because I don't want to have that, uh, you don't, strength training does not activate mTOR as much. Strength training does not require glycogen. Right. So you don't, you, have, you don't have the same need for protein and carbohydrates around the workout. You just need enough to prevent any downside and you don't get too much mTOR. Gotcha. If I want to do hypertrophy work and I'm fasting, I need to put my workout just before the feast. Otherwise, I lose many of the benefits. Gotcha. So if I'm doing strength, I'm going to train at 4.30, mm -hmm. I'm on my shake, uh, then I will eat at 6. And what do you have when you come home? Uh, come home? Yeah. Okay. I, I just had protein during the workout. Okay, so okay, so you're just having, gotcha, so then you fast all day. Yeah, and then, and then 6, 7, 8, depending, I'm, I'm okay. going to have my one meal. Okay, that's great. Is there anything you avoid? Any foods that are just like off limits? I know you have like a pair, I remember, you, Ben and you guys talk about a very simple diet. You have very minimal food selection. Is Why? It's because I, I'm a picky eater. It's, it's not okay. because I don't like a lot of food. Uh -huh. So for me, dieting is really easy. Yeah. Like what about pizza, man? What do we, I don't like pizza. What if we went to an Italian restaurant? What would you? I, 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 <laughs> there is literally zero Italian food I like. Really? No. Because I, I don't like food that touches each other. Where would we go if we went out? Steak? Steak. Steak's good. Uh, Arby's is awesome. Arby's? Oh, dude. <laughs> all right. I'm a burger what guy. What about wine? What about does that fit into your uh, lifestyle? At all? What wine? 
red wine or sure i mean if i it, it actually helps when when you understand the chemistry of the brain mm -hmm. it can help because it especially if you are someone like us who is super responsive to adrenaline the, our biggest problem is that adrenaline stays connected to the receptors for too long and that will actually make the receptor resistant and you can also deeply gabon serotonin because you you are always anxious now anything that can calm the brain down at the end of the day can actually help us from a neurological perspective of course there are calories in wet wine alcohol can, but but from a neurological perspective it can actually it can actually help gotcha. because it can help us decrease the, the effect of adrenaline calming the nervous system, helping you, helping us recover. Now, one thing I also like, I like to use glycine in the evening. Mm. Uh, glycine is an amino acid that is actually also a neurotransmitter, and it does pretty much the same thing as GABA does. Oh. So it, it calms the nervous system down. Three grams is enough, up to five grams for some people who are really, really uh, anxious. Now, some people will actually get amped up from glycine. But that actually is a cool diagnostic tool because the only people who get amped up from glycine are those who have too much glutamate. Mm. It, it's, it's a weird thing at the receptor level. Excess glutamate turns glycine into an excitatory neurotransmitter and anything, anybody else will get calm from oh, glycine. Interesting. Uh, I definitely don't want to uh, leave out talking about maybe some of the big lessons you learned from Charles Paul. Mm, mm, I know cool. you're very close. Yeah, yeah. We always talked about you when I went to seminars and uh, yeah. Well, people, it's funny because when you look at many things we take for granted in the training world actually come from Charles, either come from Charles or were popularized by Charles. Uh, the A1, A2 antagonistic split, like when you see a program and you alternate exercise one, let's say a back exercise and A2, a chest exercise back and forth, back and forth, that's from Charles. Huh. Charles popularized that. Like, uh, quad exercise, hamstring, quad hamstring, B1, B2, oh. C1, C1, that comes from Charles. Yeah. Tempo. Yeah. Like using the tempo prescription, four seconds down, yeah. zero second in the bottom, one second up, zero second up. That's from Charles, Charles yeah. and Ian King. Yeah. Uh, but Charles popularized it. Uh, the meat and nut breakfast. Yeah. Staying low carbs until you are at a certain percent body fat. That's from Charles. Um, structural balance. What did you think of this? Uh, you know, you don't deserve carbs unless you're 10% body fat. But here's the problem. Okay? Uh, the, the idea is decent. Okay, The idea is not stupid. And it's yeah. probably some, it, it's true that the leaner you are, the more sensitive to insulin you are. Or more precisely, the more, it's not necessarily how lean you are, it's your muscle to fat ratio. Mm -hmm. The higher your muscle to fat ratio is, the more sensitive to insulin you are. So it's true that the more muscular you are, the more carbs you can have, okay? Yeah. But here's the problem I have with giving the 10% rule, okay? A true 10%. A true ten percent is stupid lean. It's really it's lean. very lean. It's yeah, very lean. six pack. You know, if you if you if you your listeners goes to tibarme.com, my website, yeah. and you see the picture of me on the the, the front page, I have veins on my eye, my, my abs, like striated shoulders. Do you know how much I, I was at nine point two percent body fat? I had veins on my legs, yeah. striation on my legs. A true ten percent body fat is. Photo shoot lean. Yeah. Photo a true. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Of course, uh, by, by caliper, you could test at 4%. But here's the thing. I don't trust caliper that much. Mm -hmm. I remember one day I was like thinking about maybe doing another bodybuilding show. And, and a friend of mine who's a great trainer measured me at 4.1% body fat, which is stupid because at 4.1, even on the Olympia stage, you are not 4.1%. Yeah. And, and I had at least 20 pounds to lose to look good. Uh -huh. And I, I went to Spain for the biosignature course with Charles. And I was measured by 20, 30, by very high level coaches. And depending on who measured me, I was anywhere between eight and 16% body fat. Uh -huh. And when I came home, my friend tested me again, and now I was non-measurable, which means less than 0%. So in the span of two weeks, I was anywhere between zero and 16% body fat. So here's the thing, okay? Uh, huh. By saying you can't have carbs until you're 10%, nobody's gonna have carbs. Yeah. I probably, I, I agree with the more muscular you are, the more carbs you can have. I agree with that, but the 10% figure is unrealistic. Yeah, it's it's a freaking high bar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I did like how he was just very black and white and yeah. it was, you know, everything was, you know, almost a challenge. Mm -hmm. 
and he was very clear. I remember his analogy for intermittent fasting. He called it a sledgehammer when all you need is a fly swatter. In most cases, he had very good analogies yeah. that make complex and topics. Another thing just like, is oh, that, I get that now. And it's, he's what I call a 1A. Okay? He was a 1A, so very dominant, needs to be the leader, uh -huh. needs to be number one, very uh -huh. competitive, uh -huh. zero patience, zero empathy, okay? Yeah. With all the pros and cons that come. Uh -huh. And that kind of personality uh -huh. appeals to people who are like us, the two A's. Yeah. Two A's are mimickers. We will be influenced by the person that had the greatest impact on our beliefs. And a lot of people, they wanted to be respected by Charles. My life goal was being in his inner circle. My, it is, my main goal was being respected by Charles and I would do anything to be respected. I, I, I can't understand what, even nowadays, where a lot of people will say, well, you are just as good as he was, maybe you have surpassed him. Hmm. I still felt the need to be respected by him. And that was his greatest asset, if you hmm. want to call it that, because many coaches became so much better hmm. than they thought they could just because they needed his approval. Anyway, and it doesn't matter why you got there in the first place, okay? If you get there, then it was a good thing. Huh. I one of my business coaches as well. Do you know who Grant Cardone is? No. No? Maybe. Stan Effrey didn't know who he was either. He's like the uh, Charles Paul Quinn of sales. You know, mm -hmm. he's in uh, his late 50s. He's got a massive event coming up, GrowthCon, 10X GrowthCon, and it's uh, in Miami in February. He's got 35,000 people Ooh. coming to it, Marlin Stadium. True. He's aggressive. He's, he's like I've, black I've, and white. I've, I've, I've trained one person that attracted more people than him. Joyce Meyer. You know Joyce Meyer? No. She's one of the top preachers. Oh, oh, Joyce. Was. Okay. Yeah. yeah. She was one of my clients. Yeah. And, hey, and you were, so anyways, I was just saying that because Cardone keeps it very simple mm -hmm. and it, it's not like deep. It's just true and it's penetrating. And, and you know, it, from a marketing standpoint, okay, I remember I was uh, in Colorado with uh, Biotest owner Tim Patterson mm -hmm. and he had the Spike Energy Drink, which was the second most biggest energy drink beside Red Bull, okay? Uh, in several states in the U.S. And, and they decided to reduce the number of flavors from six to three. Mm. And they said the reason why we're doing that is because when people have too many choices, they buy less. Mm. They buy less because it's too complicated. Yeah. When it's clear cut, an easy choice, people buy more. It makes sense. Hey, hey uh, you told me uh, prior I was sharing with you that my father has been a pastor for yeah, 35 yeah, years yeah. and you went to seminary school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. With, with Paul Carter, same thing. Uh -huh. okay. Yes, where you at with your faith I, 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 was, I was a mass servant. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where are you at right now these days with your faith? Uh, it's. I'm just curious. Yeah. It's it's being challenged. Uh -huh. Because uh, it's funny because I mentioned Joyce. Joyce Meyer is because the first first I day I heard of Joyce is she associated with Chicken Soup for the Soul? Joyce Myers. Yes, absolutely. Okay, that's where I heard it from. And she's on TV all the time. And, oh. and the first thing, the first time I met her in St. Louis, I said, "Hello, my name is Christian." And her answer was, "Are you?" Like, it took me like like. Okay, I, I normally speak French. Maybe uh -huh. I'm not getting something. Uh -huh. um, and one thing I mentioned to Joyce is I, I was raised in the Roman Catholic Church, hmm. uh, which is the most yeah. important church. I went to a uh, Catholic high school as well. My yeah. parents grew up Catholic. Yeah, yeah. But they were more like CME Christians. They called themselves. They just go to you know church during Christmas and Easter. Yeah. They didn't you know wasn't a personal part of their life. Yeah. And what, and. and the problem is that when I, I, I love reading about religion, mm. that is with training and politics, it is my, my other passion. I love reading about religion and this, especially the history of religion. And when you dig deep, you can see a lot of contradiction with the, because the Roman Catholic Church, and I'm not talking against the church and, and, and because most churches did that, they will select the textures, the, 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 the text, the scriptures that prove their point or their, their own optic of religion, disregarding many other scriptures that have probably an even more powerful message. Mm. And to me, that felt wrong, okay? So, and Joyce had a good saying, and is you first, you have to cultivate a personal relationship with God. Mm. That is the most important thing. A church or a faith or uh, the, the, the person you look up to for spiritual guidance should never supersede your own research, your own uh, seeking of the truth and your yeah. true relationship with God. So, so that is my belief. And when I look at all the bad things that happened because of 
organized religion, uh -huh. it, it, it challenged, not my faith, it, it yeah. challenged my, my perception of religion. Yeah, it certainly can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it certainly can. I think that's why, you know, the message we believe in, you got to always go back to the source. The values. Yeah, yeah. Go back to the truth and mm -hmm. go back to the person who shared it. Yeah. But this is this is great, man. So um, how much time? We got another few minutes here. Um, hey, is there anything else you want to share? Anything else that's, uh, you know, maybe a value to young and up-and-coming up entrepreneurs who want to be, you know, the next Christian Thibodeau, you know, somebody who's gone the distance. Like, how, how long you've been doing this, man? Like, 20, uh, 30 years? Well, no. Dude, I'm 41. Not that old. <laughs> no, maybe you've been going almost 20 years. I don't know why I said 20 years. Yeah. yeah, 20 years. Actually, it's funny because I was super lucky, man. I was training pro athletes at 19. Uh -huh. So you don't see that. You don't see that often. I was, like, super lucky, okay? And I had big, many big breaks. And one thing that... Uh, first of all, those who are established in this business, give something back. Give mm -hmm. someone a break. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, I was given two breaks that changed my life. Mm -hmm. Okay, and right now that's what I'm trying to give back. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to give back. Okay, I have like Malin and Alex, uh, who, who I bring uh, to seminar. They're kind and, of like your mentees now. Absolutely, yeah, and they have a blooming career. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the online coach I mentioned, who's who's making close to 300k a year just wow. by applying. Uh, doing system. Doing system. Hey, that's uh, a system. Hey, just as can I give you a little piece of advice? Yeah. You should create a case study around that individual, yeah. just as a hey, here's this person's story. Look what they're doing yeah. with the system. You can, you can do that. Yeah, and, and he's not like he's not a polican. He's not a guy who had a big name before that. So, yeah. so that really, really is testament to how powerful this is. But system back to what marketing is, he's got a belief system. Exactly, and it's rooted in credibility. And people are getting results from it, and really, that's those are the big th three things that we're seeing that will never disappear as long as you focus on value first, social mm -hmm. proof of the people using the system, and it's rooted in something that's not wishy washy because people are looking for leadership. People really are looking yeah. for someone that's not afraid to say this is the way to do things. Uh, it isn't like all. It depends because like ah, oh, but but. So for individuals like yourself, there's a big opportunity there, and it looks like uh, he's uh, you know he's running with it. Yeah, yeah, and and, and it's awesome to see. And uh, but and people who are up and coming. Yeah, me, I your advice. Yeah, I mean, I, it's not gonna be good advice. I want to hear it be, because me. I, what I, should they do and what should they not do? Uh, what they should do, and, and I think you you talked about it. But you, you need to find your passion. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of you see these these young people, and they they ask us, how can I be a success right now? How can I, what can I do to boost my Instagram following? What about like... Buy followers in Nigeria. Yeah. <laughs> find, that's a secret, right? Yeah. Find, 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 find the people. one thing that you are truly passionate about. The one thing that if there's only one thing you could do for the rest of your life, that would be it and become the best in the world at that. Yes. And you will never run out of business. There's no room to be third or fourth best anymore. No. You know, you know what, what, what I start... And it, when, and you must also be willing to do the work. I mean, uh, when I started out, okay, the first three years, I basically charged nothing for training because I was in a small town. Athletes didn't have that much money. Uh, and that actually allowed me to become well-known. They, they, they became business cards, and then I was able to charge a bit more money. When I started giving out seminars, I didn't charge much money. But now I'm charging a lot more. Mm -hmm. But... but uh, the, you need to climb the steps gradually. There is no uh, shortcuts. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I love what you just said there. I was talking to this. I was talking about this with Stan as well this morning. You got to compare your before with your before. Exactly. Not your before exactly. with your after. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and it's funny, but it's not funny. But uh, it reminds me of a Charles story uh, because it, it, I took his death hard because he was my mentor. But you know what, my wife actually took it harder, even though she only met him once. Oh. Because when you look at his, his, his path, it's very similar to mine. Mm. I mean, we had a very similar path. And, and you know, he had his first kid at 40. Uh, he started as a, a, as a strength coach, then he became more of a bodybuilding, body composition expert. He got his big break by writing for magazines. Uh, our timeline is very similar, and we were teaching pretty much the same material with some variants. And then he, he, he died at a very early age. Mm. And my wife like freaked out because I don't want you to die. Mm. So I'm, I'm giving seminar, and that actually makes me reevaluate my life. Oh. 
who needs to be in your life to keep you grounded or just to keep you good head on your shoulders? It's my wife. My, yeah. It's funny because it, she, she the, my biggest regret is that she doesn't speak English because she can't hear me talk about it. Oh. Because you know, I, I'm honestly a lousy husband. Now, I, I, I do not make her feel special. I'm not the one who externalizes emotions. And she feel, especially now, she she just sent me a text. Hey, does that label help you, by the way? Hmm? Does that label help you? Which label? L- lousy husband. <laughs> Not really. It should be better. <laughs> yeah. But I I I know I have a problem. I I know what you're saying. I know I have a problem. And um, and I I I really want to make her feel better because she feels like she 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 doesn't bring anything in an income. Uh, I'm paying for everything. And she, why do, are you with me? I always. I feel like I always make you feel bad about yourself. And I feel like I'm always putting pressure. Why are you with me? Because I need you. Uh-huh. Nobody in the world yeah. could tolerate me. I think that's beautiful. Yeah, you like flipping it. Like there isn't another woman who can there, 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 deal what, what with you like, did. what I who Zero. I am. I understand that. Zero. But, but I, I will tell you, we went through the same thing because you know Flavia had an online business and it was very successful, brought in a lot of money. But, um, you know, when the baby arrived, she was torn to follow her mommy instincts or to be businesswoman. Mm -hmm. And it actually required some outside eyes from Craig Valentine. In Mm -hmm. fact, when he asked her at a workshop we went to, what do you want to do? And she said, I'm not sure. And when she said, I'm not sure, that was an indication that she shouldn't do the business. So she, she put the business on hold. And it took almost a year where she became comfortable with not bringing anything in because I was reassuring her that, hey, knowing that you're enabling me and willing to allow me to now do what I do best, like this is allowing me to no, that's, excel even further. That's something I need to tell her. Yeah, she's a lot. By her being supportive and willing and still obviously making sacrifices that she needs you to make to meet her needs, obviously you can't just be the bull that drives the sled all the time. Uh, but I keep reassuring her that I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing if I didn't know that you are happy with like what you're doing as well. So it's just the communication. It's normal, man. It's It's, it's really normal. It's just, just over communicating. And I totally get it. Like, you know, she's dying to get her body back, you know, the the baby stuff. Actually, you know what? She she actually is in better shape than when she was. Oh yeah. Dude, it's great. But well, she was in like awesome shape. Three months before becoming pregnant, because we have photo shoot. Right. But after that, my wife is a weird person. She's not passionate about training. She loves CrossFit, but she, if, she, if she doesn't train for six months, no big deal, right? She will train when she gets out of shape. Huh. But she has amazing genetics, so she gets into great shape. But when she actually got pregnant, versus now, when she got pregnant, she 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 gained like twenty pounds after the photo shoot before she got pregnant. During the pregnancy, she only gained twelve pounds, and a week later. She was five pounds lighter than when she got pregnant. Oh, wow. So she's actually very lean right now. She just doesn't have the same amount of muscle mass. Hmm. But it, she has such good genetics. Within a month, she'll be back in top shape. And I just hate her for that. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? She, she has the. She is the driving force. She is yeah. my confidence. I mean, I'm a type two A. Type two A. They they are mimickers. They they adapt their personality to the person they are with. So when I'm a, with a, one, she's a one A, or she's confident, she's driven. Uh, I I take on her characteristics. Huh. Whereas if I were with someone who's not confident, who's negative, I would become that person. So she actually allows me to become the better version of myself, even though she probably doesn't realize it because I'm not telling her. Incredible. Hey man, I'm. It's just an honor to have you here, man. At six o'clock, I said we shut her down right at six, and I. I want to respect our time and, and I, I need some burgers. Yeah, you need some burgers. I'm sure you got a lot of fans waiting for you back at the hotel. So, hey, I know hopefully this is just the start of our getting to know each other formally. Absolutely. Now. Yeah. And uh, why don't you just finish off letting uh, listeners know how they can get plugged into your world, into your upcoming workshops, mm-hmm. how they can get a hold of you for coaching or any well, anything just, to just go deeper with everything you. is my in my hub, tibarmi.com. You have the uh, tibarmi.com. Exactly. T H I B A R M I Y.com. Yeah. Okay. So, so you, you go there, you have online coaching, you have what, what I like to do, online consult. So if a coach wants advice about how to become a better coach, advice with clients, once you know about your neurotype, then you can just book a consult, a consult with me. Uh-huh. Uh, you have 200 articles, 200 videos about on my system, about my world and my trainers. Yeah. 
Awesome. Well, I'm going to be doing the test. They're going to find out. How do I get the test, by the way? I'm going to send it to you. Oh, amazing. Yeah. yeah it, technically, it's, it's not online yet. We're working on an electronic version of it, but uh-huh. I'm going to send you the, the paper version. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, yeah, Christian also agreed to check out uh, the preload and give me your honest feedback. I yeah, you I'm can't take the caffeine. Caffeine. If, if I run naked, <laughs> like in Mississauga Street, it's because of you. <laughs> With Mikey, make sure the cameras are out tomorrow. Well, that'll be a great ad. I'll give you a hundred percent commissions if we well, that uh, might, run that. That might be worth it just because of that. <laughs> That's awesome. Christian, man, thank you so much, brother. Right, that was cool. awesome.